Welcome to my video. To get new educational videos and updates, please subscribe to my channel. I'd be very grateful if you could please like and share this video, which I hope will give you a beneficial knowledge. Prevention is better than cure, and this is a manual worker doing grinding without any protective googles and any grinding or metal on metal um, you must use a protective googles to prevent any eye injury if you have a foreign body already so you have to assess both eyes you have to assess the nature of the foreign body and the depth and very good history you can take the history twice sometimes and complete ocular examination to exclude any other foreign bodies other in the lower cornix or in the cornea and you have to assess the depth of the foreign body and the upper fornix especially the sulcus subtarsalis and the other eye as well so is it single or multiple And is it intracorneal only or penetrating on the posterior surface of the cornea? So the this is a wooden foreign body that penetrates the full thickness in the cornea and it needs um, to be removed in the operating theater. So this is a um, uh, anterior segment OCT can give you a very good idea about the depth. Uh, the ultrasound uh, B scan and the CT can exclude other intraocular foreign bodies. So the methods of removal can be either by irrigation, by wet cotton bud, or by the needle 23 gauge or 27 gauge needle, or alger brush burr. So the needle can dislodge the foreign body, especially the metallic foreign bodies. And if it is only corneal, so you need to use uh, topical anesthetic uh, to explain the procedure and assess the anxiety of the patient. To assess the patient to focus on a target to avoid any movement and um, make the needle parallel to the corneal surface. Uh, this is a modification that I do for the needles just to make it easier when you are doing this on the slit lamp. So the bevel is up and I bend the needle about 45 degrees just to make it parallel to the surface of the uh, cornea like this picture. This will make it easier especially um, when you are removing it on the slit lamp and avoid the nasal uh, bridge so you, you begin with using topical anesthetic either uh, proxy metakine or other anesthetic drops and make sure you are holding the eyelids very well some people might use uh, speculum um, and you make sure you are focused and this is the first case you just dislodge the metallic foreign body with the needle and once it is dislodged that's enough um, this is the metallic foreign body and this is the rust ring with the retro elimination so we can try to remove the rust ring
and try as much as you can not to be very deep just to avoid any future scarring The rust ring has been removed now. This is uh, another case with central metallic foreign body as shown in the video here. Uh, this patient had previous scarring and other rust ring before and this is the metallic foreign body. It is very central. So we dislodge it with the needle like the previous case and that's it this is the third case of very uh, sticky rust ring the metallic foreign body is not found there was a lot of uh, previous attempts to remove it So you can try to remove this rust ring. It is very sticky. So we removed most of it. And with the Algar brush burr, we can remove the remaining cross string. So this is the burr here in motion. So this is how to remove this uh, rust string. And make sure you are not very deep. And this is after removal and this is after about one month with some scoring. Thank you for watching.